So in review, I've opened an image. This is the CRAM JPEG image out of the week two image folder. And then when my image was open, I had created a new layer. So I selected Control J, or you can right click on the background layer, select duplicate layer, or you can select duplicate layer from the upper right hand corner as well. Once I had my layer duplicated, that's all we've done so far. We reviewed the layers panel and you should be somewhat familiar with the overall layout of Photoshop at this point as well. So this is considered an image layer. You can see here with the thumbnail that it's a picture. And so this is a pixel based layer or called a pixel layer, which would be isolated using this pixel layer filter button up here. Okay. Another type of layer is called a fill layer. So if I wanted to create a new layer, I can come down here, select the create a new layer button. You'll see it got these little gray and white boxes that shows transparency. So for a fill layer, what I will want to do is fill it with either a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern. And this is great for creating backgrounds or changing the color of an object. For this layer, I am going to select a color from our image. Okay. And I am going to fill it using the paint bucket. And you'll see that now it appears that I have just a solid brown layer. That's a fill layer. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer. And you'll see that it's like it's placing a haze over my image. Okay. Once again, because you should be working along with me, let me back up and show you what I did. I created a new layer. So down here, I selected the create a new layer button. I can also create a new layer up here in my layer panel menu. And if I select create a new layer from there, I can go ahead and rename it when this window pops up. So I'm going to name this fill layer. I'm going to select OK. And you'll see that fill layer is now listed above layer one. Now I am going to come over and I am going to click on the foreground color box in the toolbar. And color picker panel pops up. Now I am going to, when I leave the color picker panel, you'll see that my cursor changes to an eyedropper. And I am going to select a color right here. You'll see on this mug, this brown color. And when I've selected that color, I'm going to click OK. And then I am going to select the paint bucket. Now your paint bucket might be showing up as a gradient tool or a 3D material drop tool. All you have to do to get to the paint bucket tool is click and hold down on the gradient tool or the 3D material drop tool and select paint bucket tool. 
and you'll see that your cursor now has a paint bucket attached to it. I've got the brown color I had selected off the coffee mug set to my foreground color and now I'm just going to click over my image and it fills the entire image with solid brown. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reduce my opacity on that layer to 40 percent. And that is a fill layer. The next type of layer we're going to discuss is the adjustment layer. And an adjustment layer allows you to apply changes to either one or all of the layers beneath it. And you can view these changes in the properties panel. So one of the types of adjustment layers is a black and white adjustment layer. And to view the different types of adjustment layers, all you have to do is click on adjustments. If you don't have an adjustments panel option, then you can go to window and select adjustments there. Now that I've clicked on my adjustments tab, I can see that one of the options is brightness contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, hue saturation, color balance, black and white, photo filters, channel mixer, color lookup, invert, posturize, threshold, selective color, and gradient map. Those are all different types of adjustment layers that I can utilize. So next what you need to do is you need to click on layer one. So click on layer one, that is our duplicate of our background layer. And then you're going to come up here and you are going to click on the black and white adjustment layer. And when you do so, you're going to see that your image turns black and white and you get a properties panel that pops up with all of the different adjustments you can make to the black and white. Now under the black and white adjustment panel, you're going to go in and you can select different types of presets. That allow for different looks to your black and white. Now black and white is going to look a little odd to you because you've got a brown fill layer on the top. I can come over next to my fill layer and turn it off and you'll see that the black and white is actually showing up a little more distinctly there. So under the presets you're going to select the blue filter. So in the properties under preset for your black and white adjustment layer you're selecting the blue filter. Okay. Once you've done that, go ahead, turn your fill layer back on. It makes the image look like it's got a tonality to it now. One thing that's important to remember about an adjustment layer is it does not include any information about the image. It only includes the information about the adjustments. So there are no pixels included in an adjustment layer. Another important thing about an adjustment layer is that it does not affect the original. I could always go back and turn my adjustment layer off and revert back to my original image. Something else that's good to know about an adjustment layer 
is that they can be dragged from one image to another so that you can get the same exact effect on multiple images. So as you'll notice, when I added my adjustment layer, the properties panel popped up for the black and white adjustment layer with all of the different aspects for that adjustment layer. I could have adjusted individual colors and tints. I can revert back, etc. Okay, so just to recap, so far what we've done, we opened the cram.jpg image, we duplicated the background layer, added a fill layer with a fill color that we got off of the coffee cup here. We filled the layer with that color and reduced the opacity of that layer to 40%. Then we went down and we selected layer one. After selecting and clicking on layer one, we then added a black and white adjustment layer. Once we have added our black and white adjustment layer, we selected the blue filter preset and left all the other defaults as is. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and save this image. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna select File, Save As, and this is Chapter 3. So I am going to save this as 3A Cram .psd. So 3A Cram .psd. Be sure you're saving it somewhere that you'll be able to locate it. If you haven't already created a week two folder to put all of your files and screenshots and chapter analysis projects, etc., then I would recommend you do so. Once I have added 3A to the front of the cram.psd, I select save. And that will save all the changes I've made so far. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at adding a shape layer. To add a shape layer you need to use the shape tool. So I'm going to add a rounded rectangle. In order to add a rounded rectangle I'm going to go to my toolbar. I'm going to go all the way down depending on what tool you have or what shape you have showing. You might have the ellipse tool or rectangle or line tool showing. Once again all you have to do is click and hold down and all of the different types of shapes will pop up. Additionally you can click and hold down the Alt Option key on any of the tools and it will cycle through the various tools in the hidden menu. So I can hold my Alt Option key down and click through my Shape tool until I get to my rounded rectangle. Now I want to add a white rectangle and so in order to do so I can do one of a few things. Pure white is 0, 0, 0, 0 on CMYK. It is 255, 255, 255 on RGB. It does not matter how you get to pure white, but you need to select pure white for your color. I'm going to click OK. You'll see now that my foreground color has pure white. Another way of doing so is to select the 
default foreground background color which shows us a black and white square overlapping and then you can click this arrow right here and it will bring white to the foreground optionally you can hit the X key and the X key on your keyboard will randomly switch between foreground and background colors okay so I have my rounded rectangle tool selected I am going to click in my image I'm going to make my rounded rectangle 2400 px for pixels by 500 px for pixels then I'm going to select OK and you'll see that my rounded rectangle is created now I'm going to use my move tool I can click on the tool up here at the top of the tool panel or I can hit V on the keyboard and that is the shortcut and I am going to place it close the properties panel so you can see in the middle of my image and you can see that that is the middle by that purple fuchsia line that shows up now you'll notice to the right over here my shape layer has this little corner cut out of it that shows that it is a smart layer and we'll discuss that here in just a moment what a smart object is considered it's almost like a container it's almost maybe layer wrapper is a better description you can put anything you want into a smart object it can be pixel based images raw images vector files other layers even entire Photoshop documents and Photoshop will keep that content safe by only making changes to the outer wrapper instead of the actual content and this enables you to be able to resize things within that smart object without affecting the quality of that object you can swap out content run filters do just about anything you want and we'll cover more about that in future chapters now the next layer we're going to create is going to be a type layer but I want to place my type layer at the top of all my layers in the layers panel so I'm going to click on the fill layer once again make sure your brown layer is at 40 percent opacity and that it's been renamed to fill layer and to rename that layer if you didn't name it when you first created it all you have to do is click on the name twice so double click on whether it says layer 2 layer 3 whatever double click on it and you can type in fill layer click off and that will remain now to create a type layer all you have to do is select the type tool which is the T tool over in the toolbar the shortcut for that tool you can just hit T on your keyboard and the type tool will be selected now you can create a type layer a couple of different ways you can click and drag on your shape and it will make the entire shape a type or a text box or go to my history panel go up you can just click on your document and begin to type and it will create a type layer for you without having to have a text box however we are going to type within our shape layer so select your type tool click within the shape layer 
and I would like for you to type your first and last name. Now one thing you'll probably notice is that your name is too small. The font size is too small. Maybe it's not the right font you would prefer. Probably not the color you would prefer. So make sure you have the type tool selected and double click on your name. Or you can click at the front of your name and drag over it. Or you can select your type layer and double click within that T thumbnail and it will automatically select all the text within your type layer. So once again, I can double click within the thumbnail on the in the square with the T in it. I can select my type tool and click at the beginning of my name and drag to select. Or I can click anywhere within my name and double or triple click and my name will be selected. It is up to you how you choose to do so. Now we're going to change our font size. You'll see that 72, not quite big enough. Not for this image, not for the size of our box. So we're going to change our font size to 148. So click within the font size box up at the top. And you're going to type in 148. And then next you're going to select the font. And the font, you can see our font is changing as I go over various fonts on the left. We're going to choose Helvetica Bold. So I've got Helvetica Bold for my font. It is bold for the font type. The size is 148 points. I am now going to select the color. So I'm going to click on my color square over on the left. I can also click in the color square along the top. Either way will change the color of my words. Now I want to select a dark brown color. So I am going to click on this wooden box area right here and you'll see this brown chocolatey dark brown color shows up. That gets me pretty close to where I want to be. Going to select OK and click off. Or select my. Next, I'll be selecting my move tool. And you'll see that my layer now is named what I had typed in the layer over to the left. So Gina Jean is now the name of my type layer. Now, one thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you center your name as much as you can eyeball it. You'll be learning more about centering and guides and everything else shortly. We talked a little bit about it last week. You'll learn more. But for now, you can see that I can tell when I have my name centered by that pink purple line that appears as I move my name around. So now you should have a background layer, layer one, a black and white adjustment layer, your rounded rectangle layer, your fill layer reduced to 40 percent, and then your text layer using Helvetica 
to type your name at a size 148 font. All right, so we need to make sure that we save our changes. So I'm going to go up here and select File, Save. I don't need to rename it. We named it earlier. It's going to be in that same location, but it's going to save my changes. Now let's talk about how we go about selecting and viewing layers. Again, to turn a layer off, all I have to do is click the I button that is to the left of each layer. Additionally, to select a layer and make it the active layer, I need to click on the layer over here by the layer name and you'll see that the layer becomes highlighted. That means it is my active layer. It is the one I am making changes to. A lot of times when you're working on an image and you're like, it's not working, I can't see what's happening, I keep doing this and nothing's changing. It's because you're on the wrong active layer. If I was down here on my background layer, and I made a bunch of changes, making it black and white or a different hue, I wouldn't see any of those changes because layer one is on the top of that. Now, anytime you make a change to a specific thing, it usually only affects the layer selected. There are a couple of exceptions. If you crop your image, you are affecting all the layers. Also, if you change the color mode of one part of your document, you are changing that color mode for all the layers, not just the active layer. So that's important to remember. Okay, so make sure that you have this saved. And we're going to discuss quickly a couple of other types of layers. We're not going to demonstrate these, but there are video layers and 3D layers in addition to the layers we discussed and worked with today. Once again, make sure you've saved this. So File, Save. You can see the name of your document up here on the tab. So it should be named 3acram.psd. It is very important that you turn in the PSD files for your projects so that you can be graded. If you turn in a JPEG, none of your layer information is going to be visible and you're going to lose the points for the assignment. So please make sure that it is a PSD file that you turn in. Okay. So now that we've got it saved, you can close that. The next video will be discussing various other forms of layers and how to utilize them.